much fab. Gonna be uh, dragging this thing out today. I've got that half cage built at the back there. I'm gonna get that installed today. Um, this, is, this has been like a long-term project, which I'm building for a customer, a friend of mine. And it's just something that uh, when he's got some money to spend on it, he'll give me some money and I'll do a bit of work on it. And it's just been good to have something sat at the back of the workshop. So when things were a bit quiet, I could uh, drop back and get some stuff done on that. So I'm gonna get the cage installed and uh, finish off the steering rack mounts. All right, so what we got going on here is these, these uh, base plates are welded to the chassis legs that come up and over. So the back legs of the cage are gonna sit on here. And then we need to fold up some plates which are gonna go along the floor this way and up here and uh, they all get welded in to the floor here. And then I've got this little hole to repair. And that happened when I put the MIG gun on my leg and then um, lent on the trigger. And it uh, blew a hole in that. So first job is, uh, oh, and then the cage is gonna come up close to the roof. And this roof obviously has no support uh, panels in it or anything. And it, you would normally have something sort of supporting this roof to stop it drumming and um, that sort of stuff. So off the top of the cage, I'll just make a little piece that will actually come up to the top of this. And it won't be welded to this, it'll just, it'll just be bonded. Um, because I don't want to put any welds on the center of this roof because it's uh, you just risk warping the whole roof. So I've got my cardboard template, brand new Sharpie. There's nothing like a brand new Sharpie. All right, so I've got my plates cut, folded, got the mill scale ground off them. And um, now I'm gonna sit the cage in here and just make sure everything is where it needs to be. All right, so this is where we're at now. This is how this thing sits in here. So the only way I'm gonna get to weld the back of this is to um, weld the front edge of this all the way around as far as I can get and then uh, slide this plate forward with the cage, slide the whole cage forward, weld around the back, and I can push it back again and uh, weld down all the seams right around the floor here. And um, I've got a few little tips for welding thicker plate to thinner tin. I've done a video actually welding thick to thin. So you can check that out.
Now I'm going to weld this in. What I'm going to do here is this is a little bit thicker, so I'll be able to get away with running a continuous weld. To be honest, I could run a continuous weld all the way around this just by sort of directing all the heat at the thicker material and then letting it sort of flow onto the thinner stuff. But because I've got a um, quite a flat floor here, if I run a continuous weld along here, I'm just going to warp the hell out of this floor. Now, when it comes to like fitting cages, I wouldn't really care if I warp the floor. Um, I'm more concerned about welding the feet in like the way I want to weld them in. And if the floor warps, the floor warps. I don't, I'm not really fussed. Um, but usually where your feet are going in a car, you've got a lot of different contours of the metal and uh, you're much less likely to warp it. But with this, I've got this big flat floor piece here. I don't really want to risk uh, buckling all this up. So around this floor, I'm going to pulse the trigger, which you'll have seen me do before. So that just puts a bit less heat into it. Um, I would recommend you always do a continuous weld wherever you can, but I am going to do it for those reasons around here. I'll do a continuous weld around here. Another little tip is if you weld downhill, you're much less likely to blow a hole because you've got gravity sort of working with you and, and pulling the weld down as you're doing it and it doesn't doesn't allow it to burn in as well so um, you, you kind of can get away with uh, a bit more if you're running downhill. The problem with doing this is you need to have the welder hot enough to uh, burn this plate properly so at that level it's likely you're going to be blowing holes in the thinner material so you just direct it more at the thicker let it wash onto the thinner. I've done, like I said before, I've done a whole video on it, so I'll put a link to that at the end. All right, the feet are welded in. You can see the difference between like a pulsed weld and a continuously run weld. I mean, there's a bit, a little bit of warp on this side. This side stayed nice and flat. wheels on my uh, jig or it's a treat. I've got a piece of this which I already cut for something else which is going to be perfect width. So this is going to go from the top flat section of the cage just before where the bends start straight up to the roof panel and then it'll, it'll have a curve in it following the roof panel and then a folded edge along the top folded edge will bond to the roof and then uh, this will stitch weld to the cage we'll put some um, dimple dyed holes in it and uh, should look pretty good so scribe that all the way over and I just pushed it up either side to the roof and then measured from that point down to the center, like the biggest part of the gap. And then obviously just ran that along the roof line. And then that scribed the uh, line for it. All right, so now I've got, um, I've got this matching the roof line. 
perfectly. Now I want a flat edge on top. So I'm gonna fold a little piece in the folder, just a little short strip. And then I'll use my shrinker to um, match these two curves. And then just spot weld the two together. I want to mark this and uh, so when I'm shrinking it I can do it evenly. So I'll make sure I'm starting in the centre. One sort of shrink on each line to start with because I only need to go a little bit and see where that gets me. I've just made a cock up. I've got the wrong jaws in. I'm supposed to be shrinking and I've just stretched. Rookie error. I'll go back and see if I can uh, get it flat and then start again. Look at that, I've just un unshrunk it. No, unstretched it. All right, so start again, shrinking. So it's got quite a bow in it now. Still got to go quite a lot more there. So I've got this curve matched to this curve you know, as good as I'm going to get it. So what I do is just spot weld it on. I'm going to put some uh, dimple dive holes in here just to finish it off. Not going to be able to go all the way to the edges because uh, of the way it tapers off. And uh, need to make sure I'm not bumping into this lip here. You're probably going to be able to get from about there, I would imagine. That will just get bonded along the top, push it out, and then just a load of stitch welds along the bottom. 
and uh, a lot of new cars all the roof skins are sort of bonded rather than welding so that's a perfect fit all the way along the top so just a little like little uh, bead of sealer will um, stick that but I'll use tiger seal for that but I haven't got any here so can't do that right now so, but uh, it's the last little job for today so this is a steering rack mount I haven't welded these along these uh, inner edges they're just welded on the front and back reason being is there's going to be a little piece of tube coming across the underside joining these two pieces together and uh, if you were if you were fitting something like this up and uh, you sort of tacked it all in place and then the first bit you welded was that it's going to be really likely that you'll pull the uh, top of this over so you could tack it all up and it'd be perfectly lined up where you want it and then you weld it and it'll pull and then you'll go to bolt your rack in and your rack won't fit or whatever it is you're trying to bolt in and that's because it, it's, uh, it's moved when you weld it like it's easy to underestimate how much things will move when you weld them so um, this has been welded in with this piece bolted in so now I can take take the rack out, put the piece of uh, tube in which is just going to support these two hangers a little bit more. I'll weld around those two pi that piece of tube and then the last welds I'll do will be the ones either side of this. Alright, so the inside of these will get welded once the engine's out and um, there's a lot of welding that needs doing on this from underneath so as soon as the uh, mongrel's off the rollover jig I'll make some brackets for this flip this over and there's a good few days of just finishing off everything from underneath and uh, well, there's plenty more work to be done on this thing yet. Uh. Well, the rack bolts back on, so that's always a good sign. Alright, that is it for this one. It's good to get uh, get back on this thing and get a bit done on it. It's been sat for a while. The trouble with trying to make videos whilst doing this sort of stuff is that I'm billing this hourly, so I've got to keep track of like when I'm pissing around with the camera and like filming, and you know, it, it's probably it takes probably twice as long to try and film it. So what would be done in a day would probably take two days when you're trying to film it and make sure you're getting everything in. But yeah, let me know if you want to see more of this thing in future videos and, um, and uh, I'll make that happen. But that is it for this one. Cheers for watching. I'll see you on the next one.